So now before handing this over to Veer, I'm going to poll all of you. I need you to raise your voice when I ask you to vote either for the motion or against the motion. So to begin with, let's, uh, let's rehearse raising your voice. All of you together, say yes. yes. I don't think they can hear that. <laughs> say yes, like you can hear it at Diggy Fort. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you voting for the motion, the motion is the right and left divide can never be bridged. So again, the motion is the right and left divide can never be bridged. Those of you voting in favor of the motion, say yes. yes. I'm not sure whether that was a robust yes. I'll give you another chance. Those of you voting for the right and left divide can never be bridged, say yes. yes. And now against the motion, those of you who feel that the right and left divide can be bridged, raise your voice now. Yes. I think it's fairly evenly balanced, Veer. Over to you. Thank you, Sanjoy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Before I start on the boring stuff about the rules of the debate, just a couple of things. Wow. I mean, I've heard of full houses, but this is ridiculous. I'm amazed at how many of you have bothered to come, and I hope we don't bore you. Thank you. Uh, also need to say thank you to people who say thank you to others but don't get thanked enough. I want to thank the organizers of what has been, in my experience, the best JLF ever. Willie Dalrymple, Namita Gokhale, and Sanjoy Roy. It's the vision of these people, of these three people, that's taken what started out fairly small and turned it into the greatest literary festival in the world. So on behalf of all of us, thank you guys. I also want to thank, because though you people have thanked them, you can never thank them enough the volunteers who work day and night to make this successful. Okay, now for the debate. The motion is the right and left divide can never be bridged. You voted on that, at least from here, I couldn't tell which side won. So as Sanjoy says, we'll assume that you're evenly divided. Now there are questions about the motion which I'm sure our speakers will raise. It doesn't say the Indian right or the Indian left. It doesn't even say what is right or what is left. It doesn't say, it, and I say this for many of you, that the left is better than the right. The right may well be better, so don't worry. Yeah? So basically, this is a debate that speakers can make what they want of. You will listen to them and you will later have a chance to speak about them, to address questions to them. As for the actual mechanics of the debate, it's complicated, I'm not sure I fully understand them myself, but essentially, we get every speaker to come up and speak for three minutes. After that, we ask them to come back again for two minutes and rebut what other speakers have said. Then I ask them questions, and then you ask them questions. At the end, these guys come up again, speak for two minutes, and rebut what people have rebutted. So if that makes sense to you, good luck. Otherwise, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm going to start by calling the first speaker, and that's the first speaker for the motion. And the motion, of course, is the right and life divide can never be bridged. Our first speaker is Jawahar Sarkar. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, friends, for all being here. Debaters are normally called in to make statements, sometimes in, on issues they don't believe. But this time it's very easy for me, and it'll be very easy for you once I explain, because what I'm speaking for is the blessed truth. Now, we all hear about this term left and right and can't often know uh, where it all originated from. Once I explain, it'll become very easy. You see, the first major explosion against the fixed order, against injustice, against imperialism, against the system of monarchy, against elites, 
was in the year 1789 in Paris. The Bastille was overpowered and the people of the world, not only the people of France, people of France representing all aggrieved people of the world met in the National Assembly. As they were about to debate, came in those who didn't want change, who wanted the elitism to continue, who wanted oppression to continue. And it so happened that in the National Assembly, as the president was addressing them, those who were pro-change, obviously more even then, now it's almost complete, except of course a very dangerous section of the right. Now, the ones who were in favor of change gravitated to the left, and ones who wanted monarchy, imperialism, the rights of the nobility, uh, oppression, moved to the right. And that is the beginning of the term, left and right. Pro-changers and no-changers. Those who want revolution, those who want things to change, and those who are fixed in an order. Now, in addition to that, as time went on, the term right acquired for itself certain virtues, that is, of going back in orthodoxy, of going back in history, reframing their own plastic history, their own fraud history, imagining history, imagining heroes, imagining <coughs> pieces of God or whatever, symbols of God here and there, and casting depredations upon people who did not believe in such obscurantist ideas. It's happened not only in India, it's happening on a large and uncontrollable scale in India, but it's happened all over the world. It's happened in Donald Trump's USA, it's happened in Bolsonaro's uh, Brazil, it's happened in Turkey, and everywhere they've been toppled, and here again they'll be toppled. Now coming back to this question, left and right meant progressives and regressives. So, and they are fixed points like north and south. They can never be bridged. So if you want to... I'll, I'll. Oh, okay, this one. Okay. At the end of it. Sorry. Bye. The power of the drum. Yeah. <laughs> we will do that. We will drown out our speakers because what happens usually is when you politely tell them, can you wrap up or your time is over, they ignore you. This time they can't. <laughs> can I invite the first speaker opposing the motion, Pavan Verma, to speak? Thank you, Veer. Left and right is a Western construct. In India, we believe in civilizational unity. That is the foundation of our civilization. What are the great Mahavakyas of our past? Ekam Satya Bipraha Bahuda Vadanti. There is one truth. Wise people call it by different names. We can disagree. But we agree that there is an essential unity, not only in nationhood, but in civilizations. What was our approach? Ano bhadra kritvo yantu vishvita. Let good thoughts come from all directions. What is written outside parliament when you enter? Udara charitanam vasudev kutumbukam. The world is one family. Left and right are creations of ideological expediency. Our approach is to see what can be rectified in the bad and how can the good be improved. That is why, you will be surprised, it was the Congress that banned the RSS and perhaps rightly so in the 50s. But it was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru who invited the RSS to join the 1963 Republic Day Parade because of the excellent work they did in supporting the government during the war with China. It was Mrs. I disagree with Savarkar. 
I disagree with him in his propon in his proposing Hindu Rashtra. But who is it that gave him the accolade of a postal stamp released in his memory? Indira Gandhi of the left. This is our civilization. Adi Shankaracharya and Mandan Mishra. They were as opposed to each other as the left and the right even more. They were not divided forever. They met, they had a talk, they discussed and they created a synthesis. That is the real ethos of India and not in the, and of the world also. What did Deng Xiaoping say? It does not matter whether the cat is black or white so long as it kills mice. The nation, the nation is more important, not these artificial divides. And I tell you, in 1977, the BJP, then Jansang, and the Communist Party came together to form the Janta Dal. It's a fact. Manmohan Singh, as finance minister, introduced the liberal reforms which the right wanted in the name of socialism and Jawaharlal Nehru. This is the truth of India. We have to build a nation and we have to see how to come together. When we were briefing the speakers before, Pavan Verma said, three minutes, what can you say in three minutes? But you listen to him, you can say a lot in three minutes. <laughs> can I now invite for the people proposing the motion, Purshottam Agarwal. The term left and right might have been invented in Western civilization and in the wake of French discontent against the monarchy. But the tendencies have been existing much before that, both in West and in the East. Left actually signifies the tendencies interrogating the structures of powers and privilege. In Western tradition, we have the symbols like Prometheus, who brought fire to people, fire to men, and suffered the wrath of gods for that. Then we have for example, again in Western civilization, going back in history, Spartacus, who rebelled against the Roman oppression and became a kind of Adi Vidrohi, as Amrit Rai, the noted Hindi writer, called him. In India, for example, who was Nachiketa? And what was his crime? That was he, he was cursed by his own father, Mirtve Tuam Datsyami, because he was challenging his own father for doing the wrong things in the name of right, for doing right-wing things in the name of left. That is why Nachketa questioned him, and he suffered the curse, mirtve tuam dasyami, taat kasmai maam dasyasi, mirtve tuam dasyami. And then, in early modern India, we have Kabir, who questioned every existing norm of oppression, of authority, and actually proposed an alternative epistemology. The point, my dear friends, I'm making is this, that terms are given at a certain point in history, but tendencies and phenomena exist much before being termed, being named. We must never forget that. So therefore, and another thing which I would like to add to what um, Sarkar Sahib has already said, basically, why is this fascination uh, about bridge building between left and right? Is there a history to that or not? I am a student of history. And every civilization has a history. And every phenomenon has a history. If you like, look at history, then what happens in 1991? Professor Fukuyama declared that this is the end of history because Soviet Union has ended. The capitalist democracy is the end of history. Human history has come to an end. In 2017, the same Professor Fukuyama is saying that if socialism means distributive justice, socialism will come back and it must come back because it's a perpetual conflict between fundamental world views. And civilizations actually get enriched by such conflicts. They do not get enriched by removing these things or putting the realities under the carpet. And therefore, the left and right divide is bound to persist.
Thank you, Purushottam Ji, the first speaker who left before the drum started going. Because I have been a trained debater. I know, you can, I can tell. I can tell. Uh, can I now invite from the side propose, for opposing the motion, Makarant Paranjpe to speak? Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I want to tell you, friends, that the proposition that the left and right divide can never be bridged is both counterintuitive and contrafactual. Not only does the bridge exist, but I dare say many people right here have walked back and forth across that bridge. <laughs> and as a student of language and literature, let me tell you that whenever you have propositions with words such as never, always, you have to raise your you know, antenna and you know that there's something wrong because categorical generalizations do not really work in the world. I'll give you a simple example, going back to what my learned predecessor said. In the Indian tradition, Vam and Dakshin Panth, these were terms from the Tantra. And if you, if you look at the Lalita Sahasranaman, then Savyapa Savya Margastha. So you can reach the goal through both left and the right. Both are legitimate. That is the Indian tradition. As to the French Revolution being the first rebellion against monarchy, I want to correct my worthy opponent that it was actually the American Revolution. But somehow, the Eurocentrism of history, you know, deflects the truth because the American, so to speak, freedom fighters were also slave owners, which is a terrible thing. They fought against the monarchy, but they owned slaves. And similarly, don't forget what happened in the French Revolution. They invented the guillotine, and there's a direct link between the guillotine, the gas chambers of Hitler, and also the gulags of Stalin, and the great leap forward of Mao, where almost 30, 40 million people died, according to Frank Decorter. So ideological purism is not only very dangerous to humanity, but it is simply false. So then, how do you reframe the debate? And let me propose to you that the debate is not between left and right, but between right and wrong. And we must stand up for the right. And I don't mean to say that the right wing is always right, not at all. Nor do I say that the left wing is always left out, because socialism, communism, these ideologies, pseudo-scientific, resulted in millions and millions of deaths. And even today, in our neighboring country, there's no freedom. Everybody is under surveillance. So these ideologies simply, simply do not work. So the fight is not between left and right. It's between right and wrong. It's between dharma and adharma. And the fight is between those who want India to do well and those who do not care for India. Thank you so much. Thank you, Makarant Paranspe. As the last speaker on the side proposing the motion, may I now invite Vandana Shiva to speak? Well, the other side has just admitted that left and right can never be, the divide can never be overcome. You have to change the terms to create some kind of unity. So you have actually admitted that the divide cannot work. Both, both Pavan and you, Makran, because you changed the left and right to right and wrong, but those are totally different parameters. Left is this hand, right is this hand, and when they are vectors in opposite directions, they can never meet. That's pure, simple physics. But they can also not meet because they are organized around totally different parameters. The right is organized around the issue of cultural domination, around the issue of cultural wars, cultural superiority, cultural inferiority. The left is organized around equality, justice, up in the economic sphere. The two spheres are incommensurable. They cannot meet unless you change the terms of the debate, unless you change the parameters, as our opponents have just admitted. They've already given up. <laughs> but the third most important is 
that in these 30 years, we have seen processes of economic inequality. We have seen processes of a new rule of the 1% globally as well as nationally because of the phenomena of corporate globalization. Deregulation, knocking out environmental laws and rights, uh, rights of tribals, rights of farmers, and the rights of workers. This is part of a global process. But the same powers of the 1% who want to stay in economic power are undermining the economic debate by putting a cultural divide and divide and rule in place. That's why, along with the rise of globalization, we have witnessed the rise of new identity politics of division. We have seen Samuel Huntington talk about, you can only know who you are when you know who you hate. When in reality, you can only know who you are when you know who you love. The economics of the 1% is married intimately to a division among people and a destroying of the fabric of unity. That is why the politics of hate and fear is the shadow side of the economics of limitless greed. The divide and rule that prevents the unity needed for the politics of economic justice and quality. Thank you. I have to say that this is one of those this is one of those debates where I actually feel bad when the drum goes because I'm enjoying listening to the speakers. <laughs> Our last speaker for this part of the debate, may I invite Priyanka Chaturvedi. Thank you so much, and a very good evening to all the lovely folks in Jaipur. It has been an amazing experience for me to be a part of this festival. I would like to begin by first saying, like Makranji said, there are people on the platform who have walked across the bridge. I happen to be one of them. <laughs> and so when I speak, I speak with the confidence and with the understanding that the left and the right construct do not apply to Indian governance model. India has its own construct, and which is something I'm going to be talking about when I speak against this particular motion. I would like to bring to everyone's attention, Srimati Indira Gandhiji, when she was asked in an interview, that would you call India a left-leaning nation or a right-leaning nation? She said, I look at India as a country which leans towards pragmatism. It takes the best of both worlds and ensures that the country moves forward and the country's concerns are supreme. In a multicultural country like India, in a diverse social setup like ours, in a setup where there are different languages, there are different transcripts, it is not a choice that we uh, choose of centrism. It is the need of the hour, and that is why there are various instances which Pavanji has already given examples of, whether it was about Veer Savarkarji's stamp, whether it was various you know, differences in terms of understanding how the systems work. I can give you the most latest examples. Mandrega happens to be the biggest welfare scheme which was opposed by the Bhartiya Janta Party when they were in the opposition. But today, that particular scheme, it was called a phenomenal, monumental disaster. But when the Bharti Janta Party came into power, that is the very tool that they have used to be able to provide employment. So what would you call them? Would you call them right-leaning? Would you call them left-leaning? In the same way, we are having a massive discussion in the Supreme Court on the culture of freebies, where this very same central government is opposing the idea of freebies. But it is the very same central government which puts posters across the length and breadth of this country, all the front page ads, are occupied with the same sentence of making free vaccines possible, providing free rations to those homes who cannot afford <laughs> rations. I hate the word free because it is not free. It is coming through taxpayers' money and not those who are filing their returns every day or every year annually. 
They're also coming from homes who are paying indirect taxes through the platform of GST. And these are not freebies. These are things that citizens of this country deserve. So this is a position that India has been taking. It is called the India Construct. And there can be a road, a bridge that can be walked across. <laughs> Okay, so Priyanka couldn't beat the drum. It got somebody eventually. All right, now this is the second phase of our debate. When we do this all over again, we ask our speakers to come and speak, but we give them only two minutes this time, which is, I think, good news for the drum guy who will really get going. <laughs> but this is our rebuttal section, so they're not supposed to continue making the same speech they couldn't last time because the drum went, but they're supposed to rebut the arguments made by other people. So let's start in exactly the same order. Pavan Varma, do you want to start? Yes, your rebuttal. Okay, you want to start the other way, all right? Jawar? Yeah. From there or from here? No, from here. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Now, Pavan Verma came up with a lot of Sanskrit, uh, bunch of it, uh, and he spoke about reconciliation. We are not here in the business of non-reconciliation. Reconciliation between good ideas is one thing, but the impossibility of bridging the north with the south, left and the right, are a different thing altogether. We are not against reconciliation, but I cannot reconcile to someone who has killed Mahatma Gandhi. No, sorry, there are limits to which I can reconcile. Markan talked about injustice and the guillotine. <coughs> he spoke about it. Very nice of him to remind us about the weapons of torture. But does he remember that there were riots in a particular country, particular state, where oh, what, between one and 2,000, the BBC says 2,000, people died when the police looked the other way around? <coughs> no. Markan Paranjipe has his own point. Priyanka also mentioned the secret fear that all of us had about the BJP coming to worship Narega. You see, the whole idea is that the right is now trying to come over and take over the disguise of the left to reach the people and to cover all their sins of mission and religious extremism. The co continuous setting off of riots, they are now to put, trying to put up a people's face, a progressive face, by trying to uh, hijack the left. Thank you. He had another 30 seconds, but I think everyone's just so scared of the drum. <laughs> okay, Pavan, it, now it is your turn. Sorry, I jumped the gun, yeah. It's strange, it's strange how people concede that they have lost in their rebuttal. What did Jawahar say? Jawahar said that the right is borrowing ideas from the left. This is precisely what we are saying. The left takes ideas from the right. The right takes ideas from the left. And I'm reminded of a couplet, Jo kehta tha kal shab, samhalna, samhalna, wahi ladkhadaya savere savere. Who was a member of the BJP? I am not making any personal criticism. I am saying, stop this black and white polarity. His leader and somebody for whom I have great respect, and I was vice president of that party, Mamta Ji was a member of Atal Bihari Vajpayee's cabinet. Let's be clear. And let us also be clear when Vandana Ji suddenly makes two opposite claims that the left stands for empowerment, and freedom and the right doesn't. I want to ask you, I've served in Moscow. I've served in East Europe. The kind of authoritarianism I've seen in left-controlled countries cannot be even equaled by some of the right-wing dictatorships. And so I say to you, I say to you, empowerment, democratic freedom, I want to once again reiterate to you, don't become mimics. Nobody likes photocopies. 
India is India. It's a unity. The left will learn from the right, the right will learn from the left. We will try to improve both and work towards a great and future India. Thank you. Okay, so now we are finally talking politics. I feared at the beginning that we were not going to get further in the French Revolution, but at least we are now talking about what's happening. Okay, so can I get Purushottam ji? Please come and rebut. Before rebutting, let me first agree with Pawanji. <laughs> Communist countries had a very nasty record of human rights violation. And I'm saying this with full knowledge of myself being a committed leftist. This is important to underline the difference between communist countries or communist parties and the idea of being left in the sense of being opposed to any kind of oppression and marginalization. This is extremely important distinction which we should never forget and some people try to forget it deliberately and some people forget it in their bhulapan or naivety or whatever you call it. Secondly, yes, reconciliation. In the first place, borrowing ideas is one thing and sheer political opportunism is quite another. So when someone declares to the parliament that this Mandrega is a great monument of your failures, and then without having ever said sorry for making this statement, continues with Mandrega, this is not reconciliation, this is pure and simple political opportunism. I really do not want to discuss politics of the day because to me this is a much more serious and philosophically profound question. It's not just about current Indian politics. It's about the idea of understanding the history and probably on the basis of the, the future direction of human evolution. We are talking of reconciliation. Yes, of course there can be reconciliation. For example, the South Africa constituted a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Reconciliation between the practitioners of apartheid and sufferers of apartheid, not between the ideas of apartheid and equality. There can be no reconciliation with the idea of apartheid. There can be no reconciliation with the idea and practice of untouchability. Let us be very clear about it. Reconciliation has its own limits, like everything. As Einstein said that every good thing has limit, only the stupidity is unlimited. Let us not forget that. Okay, so the gloves are finally off. Now we're talking. <laughs> Can I invite for his rebuttal speech, Makharan Paransme? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When people are losing, they misquote their opponents. I did not admit that the left and right divide can never be bridged. I said that there's already a bridge and people are walking back and forth. So a misquotation cannot be the basis of a rebuttal. And the second point I want to make is that the example given of left and right, left and right hands as vectors going away, is simply refuted by bringing your hands together for a namaste, to clap, or to hold the hands of someone you like. And this is really the truth of ourselves. We cannot take extreme positions and sustain them for any length of time. Now, let me come to the other uh, opponents uh, who also, it seems to me, neglected to mention some really important things. When the riots in Gujarat were mentioned, nothing was said about what happened in Delhi in 1984. Nothing was said about 2611, when we were attacked, under whose watch did that happen? Nothing was said about the millions and billions of Indian rupees that were siphoned off from our banks. Who did all of that? Under whose watch was it done? And worst of all, my friends, nothing was said about the horrors of partition, about the ideology, you know, of extremism, which said that Hindus and Muslims cannot coexist, and so that Muslims should get a nation. And that ideology of Pakistan, that ideology of Pakistan is still alive, and we are still being bled by a hundred or a thousand cuts. So let's not paper over history, we are for reconciliation and not for extremism. And those who say that the divide cannot be bridged, I'm afraid, are either lying or 
they are actually dividing us for their own benefits. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we're talking about which party was in power during 2611. Slight change of tone, all right. Can I get from the people proposing the motion Vandana Shiva for a rebuttal? A very, very warm namaste to all of you. But my, lo my loving namaste is not overcoming and bridging a left and right divide as a political organizing system, as an issue of organizing principles. This requires a change in space. And that's what we are saying. In the current system, the left and right as constructed, that divide cannot be bridged. You need to go into another system to talk about Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which is the principle I follow when I protect biodiversity. It's another phase, it's another phase space. We have to stick to the left and right phase space. And I think there's a huge confusion between political opportunism and bridging a divide. Of course people have moved across political parties. That is pure political opportunism. It has nothing to do with the unbridgeability of the ideologies of the politics, the individuals don't carry all that politics. The second, if projects and the credits of projects are borrowed from the you know, opposition to a new ruling party, that too is not bridging a left and right divide. That's another kind of political opportunism. Projects are not ideas. Political careers are not ideas. They are not civilizational principles. Civilizational principles are not defined around light, left and right. Left and right are incommensurable. Organizing principles of higher order is another thing. Okay, for the last of our rebuttal, speeches before we turn this into discussion and throw it open to you guys. May I invite Priyanka Chaturvedi? The best way to understand that they're losing a debate is when they give certificates of who's being opportunistic, what is opportunism, what is being rigid about an ideology, what is the understanding of left-wing and right-wing politics. And that is when you start losing ground. When you say you believe the concept of Vasudeva Kutambakam, and on the other hand, you're also talking about why we cannot live as one family, goes to show you'll have lost the debate. When anger precedes your arguments, then you know you've lost the debate. So the debate was not about can, th can this never be bridged? The debate is they can be bridged. And for the betterment of this country, it is time that we talk about bridging these differences because we cannot be fighting on the basis, our arguments cannot be on the basis of self-interest. They have to be on the basis of people's interest. And that is why we need to take the best of both worlds, understanding our diversity, understanding our cultural history, understanding our civilizational responsibility, and moving towards a direction which would be not the right-wing politics, not the left-wing ideas. It is going to be India's ideas and India's story and India construct. And that is what, that is the reason why I stand against this idea of nothing can be bridged. I'm a big peace lover. I think everything can be bridged. And so can the left and the right. Thank you, Priyanka. Okay, that's the last of our rebuttal speeches. They'll speak again at the end, don't worry. But before that, let's do a bit of a discussion about the things they've said. It seems to me that both sides have adopted quite distinct strategies. The strategy of Jawahar's side is to define left and right to suit its own interests. It could be principles of a higher order to borrow Vandana Shiva's term. But essentially, their, different, their definition is that the good guys are the lefties, the bad guys are the righties. It's as simple as that. Uh, Pawan's team has taken a different approach. 
which is, yeah, there's no difference between left and right. We're all Indians. Let's talk about Indian culture, etc., etc. Now, are these two approaches reconcilable? Are they saying something completely different? Let's try and find out. Jawahar, you've sung the praises of the left. What does being left actually mean in the Indian context? Not in the French Revolution. <laughs> You're also there. You could get what was the question? What, what? In the Indian context, what does it mean to be left and right? Uh, huh? What if you want to answer? Your team. You decide. No, no, you no. Uh, no, I, I have to stand for it. Yes. Uh, in the Indian context, the left has represented a progressive push. It is not monopolized by the Communist Party or the Socialist Party. Left is an idea of progress that's been whipped up by various uh, political parties and groups. It's not the monopoly of anyone. It basically speaks for justice. It basically speaks for more egalitarian practices. It basically speaks for the weaker sections whose voices don't reach. And in the Indian context, the right represents something like breaking down Babri Masjid and things like that. The right has always been there much before this party came into being. It was a Swatantra party also. Yeah. So right has always been there, but it's unabashedly pro-capital. It has been unabashedly pro-military, pro-aggression, pro, uh, pro the rich, which is so borne by the fact that somebody who had 17, million, 17 billion uh, dollars to start with in, 19, uh, in 2014, when he brought Mr. Narendra Modi up by plane to Delhi, has today $150 billion worth of property. The, the, the phenomenal rise of one man, just think of it, the phenomenal rise of one man represents the crux of the right idea. That's all. All right, okay. Makaran Paranjpe, according to him, you can answer that, according to him, the definition of the left remains the good guys, the guys on the side of the poor, on the side of the But the bad guys are the people who destroyed the Babri Masjid and the people who support Gautam Adani. Do you want to rebut that? Yes, yes, I do. I want to say that the worst time in West Bengal, the most stagnant and economically backward time, when you didn't even have proper electricity in Kolkata, was the more than 20 years of the left rule. And don't forget, Jyoti Basu's son was a very big time capitalist himself. And I'm from JNU. We have many champagne socialists. You know, they campaigned for communism. Their children are abroad. Their children are all studying there. Pinarayi Vijayan, the chief minister of Kerala, when he falls sick, he doesn't go to, the, doesn't go to Cuba or China. He goes to Mount Sloan. He goes to uh, Sloan Kettering or wherever. He goes to the US. This is a world of innovation, and these ideas of left and right are ideas that need to be thrown into the historic dustbin. I've, I'm trying to say that these categories are a sideshow. Left and right don't apply to India, as our side have said, and the real question is totally different. The real question is one of power, and the, the answer that we all have to give is what kind of people do we want to elect to come in power? And good for India that we've elected left of center people earlier, like Mrs. Gandhi. We are electing right of center people today. Tomorrow, who knows whom we'll elect? That is the strength of democracy. If you say they're incommensurable, you're actually anti democratic and exclusive. Mark, you're you. so right about the communists. Why don't you join the Trinamool Congress? All right, okay. <laughs> okay. Mag Magharan, Magharan, this view of your side appears to be that this left-right stuff is irrelevant in the Indian context. Yet, every time you give an example, you say the left did this, the left did that. So what is it? Is the left relevant because you bring it up so often? Thank you, Veer. All I meant to say was it's not relevant. And how do you show it? You show it by bringing it up and the contradictions of those stated positions. Just to show that these categories are not rigid, they're not fixed, okay. and certainly they're not incommensurable. That is the point we're trying to make. And therefore, the bridge does exist, and the divide can be bridged. That is our pro uh, okay. point. All right, okay. So what you're really saying is that the left, the people you described as the communists and the hypocrites from JNU who send their kids abroad, and the right, the wonderful people you talked about who destroyed the Babri Masjid, can actually be bridged. <laughs> I would say the... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait.
I will say, I will simply say that there are, so to speak, bad people on all sides. We can't yeah. brand them ideologically. Okay. What I'm trying to say is ideological purity does not exist in the real world of politics. The real world of politics is characterized by give and take, compromise, and working together, as we've seen over and over again, talking about the left, yeah. they were always with Mrs. Gandhi. I'm talking about CPI, not CPM. And my own worthy friend and former you know, student, Kanaya Kumar, was very leftist in JNU, and then he joined the Congress. Yeah. And then, of course, he lost. That's a different matter. <laughs> All right. All right, touche. Uh, ji, do you agree with what he's saying? Well, in the first place, I feel very upset when an intellectual is more concerned about the so-called champion socialists of JNU than one certain individual Indian who owns I don't know how much money. I do not even remember the anchorage figures. What was that, sir? Yeah. 14 billion or something? 150 billion. 150 billion of uh, rupees or dollars being able to dictate the this terms. This is a debate on left and right, not on, no, on Gautam no, Adani. No, no, certainly not. I'm coming to that. <laughs> but, but then, we, it is not also the debate about so-called champion socialists of Jain. Yeah, okay. I mean, you cannot indulge in personal slanders on one side or the other. So how can you talk like this that people yeah. are studying approach? Yeah, but you were just about to do that yourself, no? So, no, no. You see, bhai Sanskrit mein kaha gaya ke swatham satyam samachare. You cannot help. In, in order to rebut something nonsensical, you have to adopt a certain degree of nonsense. So, so you cannot help it. So, All right. the point I'm trying to make to your question. Yeah. See, I agree with you, Deep. This is a very serious debate. And fortunately, since I do not belong to any political party, not to CPI, not to Trinamool, not to Congress, not to BJP, I am here as a sensitive and responsible citizen of this country and of this world. The only point I wish to make, these days we are listening so much about civilizational discourse. I want to wish this point very clearly. All civilizations have their distinct features, but no civilization is quote unquote pure. All civilizations interact with each other. All civilizations exist within the broad framework of human civilization. And it is in the broad framework of human civilization that we are talking about the structures and ideas supporting the justice and those supporting the injustice. And therefore, if you look at history and if you look at contemporary world, whether in India or outside, the fact remains, people may like it or do not like it, but the fact remains that left is right and right is wrong. Oh, okay. <coughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to come back to you. Pavan, now that I've successfully taken the debate from the high intellectual pedestal you had it and brought it down to the level of Indian politics. You're in Indian politics. How do you respond to these characterizations of the left and the BJP, which is basically what we're talking about? You know, we, uh, if politics is the last refuge of the scoundrel, yeah. ideology is the last deceit of my debating opponents. All right. Because I'll tell you why. I agree with Purushottam ji that we are not discussing either individuals or a particular political party or one historical phase or another. We are discussing the possibility of an India where there is disagreement. There is a right to dissent, but there is also the unity of common purpose which takes us together to a desirable goal a goal which is good for all people. In that task, there are things that need to change in the left and there are things to change in the right. You gave an example of the Babri Masjid. I condemn it. I condemn communal violence. It's nothing that is abhorrent to me. And yet, it is true that even a non- rightist government like Mrs. Gandhi brought in the emergency. Yeah. In other words, history is full of people who have used ideology in order to do wrong. And what does our civilization ethos tell us? It tells us 
that there is an inherent ability in this soil kuch baat hai ki hasti mitti nahi hamari there is something in this soil which can take the best from all fight the wrong in all in order to build a synthesis and ultimately the only difference that unites is power political power okay. where people forget use ideology to come to political power and that is something that i condemn because you are making ideology absolute whereas your goal is transient which is political power today that is the point okay. so we must understand i i i have i remember a couplet if you will allow me of ghalib kaha mai khane ka darwaza ghalib aur kaha waiz waiz kehte hain religious sermonizer ko kaha mai khane ka darwaza ghalib aur kaha waiz bas itna jante the ki ke kal wo jata tha jab hum nikle to the that divide has become today the tool of political expediency not the reality of what is a fact that all differences in our country can be bridged so what you are saying in effect is that because of the soil of india it's possible for us as indians to come together and bridge our differences so why don't we why hasn't it happened yet it's a good point first of all i do not want homogeneity we do not want the dead piece of conformity a democracy is vibrant there should be debate there are many things i oppose in the bjp and its policies there are many things i oppose in the policy of the non bjp political parties which i think is wrong which goes against democratic principles i am against political dynasties yeah. for instance so that freedom remains but to say that because one is always right and the other is always wrong is against all dialectics okay you have to understand that vandana you're not really saying that one is always right one is always wrong you're saying they're so fundamentally different that it's stupid to talk of them coming together right what i'm saying is that a dialectics is a transcendent phenomena trying to meet a existing left and an existing right with all its histories and all its current structures that is the fiction the opposition is trying to keep up to uphold um markan talked about what kind of people do you want to elect and to me that's a tragic statement to make society democracy rights of people disappear to turn it into an electoral machinery run by the billionaires that is the tragedy so therefore you can only have a meeting by making society and the rights of people disappear and therefore making the agenda of a progressive politics disappear it cannot meet as it exists and aapne kaha pavan kuch baat hai ki hasti mitti nahi hamari ye yahi to ladai hai na yahi to ladai hai ki is desh ki mitti mein jo struggle kar rahe hain justice ke liye aur rights ke liye unhi ke rights is equation mein disappear kiye ja rahe hain the tribals the farmers the women and that's why we cannot afford this pretend meeting and have a genuine political conversation and and do you think can i can i can i come back quickly you've had more time than anybody else so very quickly <laughs> is there or is there not a fight back wherever possible i'm not saying yeah, that but i'm not saying that, that the government is doing what is right and all the equation but this country allows I for know, a fight back but governments be... have imposed even more draconian uh, suffocation of liberties and lost elections including after the emergency mrs indira gandhi what i'm trying to say is but nothing was black and white it was mrs indira gandhi 
who was at the peak of her popularity in 71 after she created Bangladesh white, and defeated Pakistan. Atal Bihari Vajpayee had the bigness of heart to say she is the Durga of Indian politics. So what I'm trying to say is, try and understand. I admire Atal Bihari Vajpayee for many things and I admire Jawaharlal Nehru for many things. For God's sake, don't make this India so brittle. Okay, no. all right. But no, recognizing the contest between people's rights and a dominant structure is not making India brittle. It is making India stronger, the India of the real people. And therefore, to hide that and deny it and to reduce it, like I said, to political opportunism, that is unfair to the people of this land who are the ones who are really upholding the civilization. I have to talk to Priyanka. Priyanka Chaturvedi, you said yourself that you, in a sense, bridged the difference between left and right. But you also place. suggested that to call the Congress left and the Shiv Sena right in the Indian context didn't make a lot of sense. So I want you to expand on that. What I'd like to say here is it is unfortunate that we are boxing Indians into the left and the right. And that is the unfortunate tragedy that we are debating right now. What I'm trying to say is, let's get them out of these boxes. Let's get our imagination to go beyond the left construct or the right construct. I refuse to say that the earlier governments are leftist governments. I refuse to say this government is a purely right government. And I refuse to believe that people vote in a pattern. In India, I can tell you, most of the voters do not care for the right or the left. What they care for, is movement upwards from intergenerational poverty. What they care for is a better standard of living. What they care for is a better life and education system for their children and their futures. And good governance. And, good governance. and that is what they care for. Okay. And governance, uh, I would want to just say one thing. There, there's a very good quote by uh, Edmund Burke who says, governance is all about compromises. The bigger question is, compromise on the rigid ideologies or compromise on short-term gains? Yeah. Compromise has to work in the benefit of the larger good of the nation or larger good of the people you're governing. That is right. what I say. Okay, okay our panelists have lots and lots to say, but let's see, if they, let's see if they say it to you. I'm going to throw this open. If you have a question, please put your hand up. I heard you. I can see you. There's no need to shout. Anybody in the back with a question? Right at the back, people who are... Okay. okay, I can't see them, so just give it to somebody at the back who you think looks interesting. Hello, first of all, thank you for this. Hello, hello, hello. The style hello. is you stand up, which you have, you identify yourself, and then you explain who the question is for, yeah. and avoid making a speech or thanking okay. us or whatever, yeah? Okay. We are short on time. Okay, so hi, I'm Anushka, and the question is for Marakan, sir. So as you, uh, like, you were comparing the 26-11 and 2002 Gujarat riots, but uh, don't you think there is a really, really wide difference between a state-sponsored, ter alleged state-sponsored terrorism and an international terrorist attack by an organization? Yeah, thank you. It's a good question, but he's answered it many times before, I'm sure. Makar. I think you misunderstood what I said. I was comparing Gujarat with Delhi. And I can add, you can also compare it with the genocide of the Kashmiri Pandits. I said 2611 was a different thing. We are being bled with a thousand cuts because of an ideology which we must be careful and fight against. And that is a bigger threat to India than this left and right type of okay. construct that is, you know, being debated here. That okay. was my point. Okay, okay we got it. S somebody else at the back? Whoever's got the microphone, just give it to somebody. In. Hello, uh, my name is Timmy. My question is to the so-called bridge builders. Yeah. Um, you have spoken in vague terminology for reconciliation, but my question is, what are you asking us to build a bridge towards? 40% of India's wealth is controlled by the top 1%. Are you asking us to build a bridge towards that? The language of, of extremism and fascistic language that is undermining the secular nature of India's democracy. Are you asking us to build a bridge towards that? Is the peace that you're looking for actually asking those who are suffering to be content in their own suffering? Thank you. 
Thank you. That's great. The questions are largely rhetorical, but I'll ask Makaran to give us some answers. No, I'll make a brief rebuttal yeah. and then turn it over to Pawan okay. and All right. Priyanka. From the accent, I believe this is a foreigner, you know, who's telling us how to run our country with due respect. We don't... Hey, 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 Makaran, you're better than that. No. Answer his argument. No. Don't go to the anti-national no. stuff. Uh, le le let me make a point. We don't need... We don't need... We Thank don't you. Need you're making this like parliament. Please, yeah, yeah. Let friend. me finish. Yeah. We don't need we don't need a neo colonial accountability yeah. from yeah. people like BBC with fake yeah. news. Yeah, Makaran, answer is bloody question. Yes, yeah, all this yeah. no, stuff. My, huh? yeah. my answer is very clear. I want to say that there's nothing ashamed, nothing to be ashamed of Gautam Adani is the second richest man in the world. There's nothing ashamed if wealth is being created. You know, there's nothing ashamed. Uh, nothing to be ashamed if India is doing well economically. And to keep everybody poor is bad economics. Okay. And we know it doesn't work. And okay. the largest number of billionaires in the world is in a so-called communist country, China. Why don't you go to China and make your point okay. about building bridges? Or Thank Pakistan you. All right. Uh, can I, can I or come Pakistan back? for that matter, if not China. <laughs> OK. Can I, can I? Okay, can we sort of elevate the level of debate slightly, yeah. Pavan, yeah. You know, uh, the question, irrespective of who we asked, is a very valid one. It's a, it's a valid one. Because I think India must be among the few countries with the highest uh, amount of economic and social inequality. Yeah. It's the truth. 1% of the country's top spectrum controls not only 40%, but in terms of influence, much more. And the bottom 20% has, in per capita terms, compared to inflation, probably become worse off. The question I am not, I do not disagree with the fact. I ask you. What was the condition of the poorest of the poor in this country when the so-called credo of government was socialism? What was the progress the country achieved when a socialist government brought in so-called right-wing liberal reform in 1991? More people were redeemed from below the poverty line than in 30 years of socialism. Yeah. Therefore, it's not a question about an ism. There is a problem in a country where in spite of the largest and growing number of billionaires, there are too many of the poor, too many of the malnutritioned, too many people who can't read and write. We have to correct it. Do we correct it by a deceitful debate on whose ideology is better or do we collect it corrected by a common resolve to see that India becomes a more equal and prosperous and democratic country. Okay. All right, let's get some more questions. I know our panelists want to speak. I just want to thank the gentleman who asked the question. Congratulations yeah. to you. Quickly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Can I just sort of caution you against quick assumptions? We are working on the assumption that everybody on this side is a congressy or a congress type person. That's not true. And certainly oh, not true. That that certainly not true. The other side no. is pro BJP. No. Pavan Verma left Nitish over the B a BJP what? alliance. Priyanka Chaturvedi totally. opposes the BJP every Absolutely. day. So let's try and keep this at the level of idea. Taken the wrong side. Yeah. All right, never mind. Yeah. All right, somebody else? Who judges okay. which is the right side somebody or the wrong side? Okay. Can you reach, can you, yeah, okay. Hello. Uh, my question is addressed to you, Veer yeah. Sangvi. Uh, yesterday, uh, somebody, I mean, from the uh, ruling party of the country yeah. spoke about he had issues with the Mughal tent. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, ultimately, the point is, where do we go from here? Everybody is equally opportunistic. Yes. So should, should all the rats leave the sinking ship or we throw the rats out? Thank you. That's again a rhetorical question, but thank you for that contribution. Somebody else with a question? 
Actually, yeah. Hello, hello. Working? Yeah. Uh, we, di we discussed I, I, about the freedom of speech, freedom of expression, everything, but recently we have seen that one documentary is banned in India. What is your comment on this? A I'm documentary? Not I'm not sure what this has to do with left and right. Can you put it in that context? I, actually, I am asking about the freedom of speech and expression that the BGP That's not our debate. Our debate is whether left and right can bridge, okay, okay. can be bridged. You missed a right I, I'm, I'm asking one question from Markande. <laughs> he mentioned that the, uh, after joining the Congress, Kanaya Kumar is finished. How you are saying that? All right, okay. He didn't say that. He said Kanaya Kumar lost an election. Yeah, yeah there was somebody hi. else at the yeah, front. Hi. Yeah, uh, who had a microphone? Go ahead. Uh, my, uh, Sir, because we have brought up on uh, a kind of a josh and rhetoric, yeah. uh, uh, we, you know, from, from a very early stage, start on Bollywood. But today, the requirement in a hybrid kind of an environment and hybrid threats around is for all of us to come together. And what, I mean, I'm myself confused whether I'm on the right or the left. That is where the way Indians are. But the beauty of it is that it is India first. And it will always stay India first. And I hope we get it together and we are going to get it together. Okay. Thank you, sir. That is another non-question. Anybody else with a question? Yeah, the gentleman there in the middle. Hi, can you give me that? Oh, hello. Good evening, everyone. You need to hold the mic closer and speak louder. Okay, okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. So the panel in front of me is a very educated panel. Uh, there are professors and uh, politicians. Get and on with it. What's the yeah, question? I, I, I'm coming to my point. So I'd like to go to the basics because I have just cleared high school, right? So I'd go to something uh, I read uh, in my civics book in middle school, which said that uh, leftism means liberalism and rightism means conservatism. Yeah. So my question is that uh, why do we need a gap? Like maybe we can, all right. Uh, my question is to the people sitting in the right, like uh, my right hand side, right? My right hand side. Uh, yeah. Yaar, Pooch, so, so what is your haan, question? So it is, uh, maybe we can, but do we need to? Uh, why can't, uh, why do we need uh, another Indian ideology and a bridge in between which we can walk holding hands? Okay, all right, okay. Why can't, uh, why can't left and right complement each other? Okay. Why can't the yeah, so much, okay. we got left it, we got it, we got it, we got it. We got yeah. it. Priyanka Chaturvedi, no. he's saying you're talking about a bridge between left and right. Why do you need a bridge? Why can't both work towards India? So that's exactly what our argument has been. Our argument has been, why do you need a left construct, right construct? There has to be the India construct. Yeah. We don't need that divide. You know, when we start talking about divides is when we start dividing our minds from one against the other. Okay. And that is the problem. Okay. And, the, the, bridge, gentleman and the, the bridge was built by the constitution of India. Yes. Okay. There's somebody in the front Thank who's you. been trying Thank to you, ask Veer. a question. Can we give a microphone here, please? Have it. Thank you, Veer. It's curious that everybody on stage, barring Madam Chaturvedi, is above the age of 80% of the country's population, right? And I speak for the um, youngsters of India. I think we can bridge this uh, gap between the right and left. So my question is to Madam Chaturvedi, what would be your prescription to bridging this gap? Your three suggestions to people of India, to youngsters of India, to bridging you know, this gap. She's made between two the right speeches. And left, she's made two right speeches. And, and one more. Yeah, sit down. One more. She's made one two more speeches. Speech one ask a serious, serious question. question. Don't give a speech question. on how young you are. It's ask a serious, serious question it's quickly. A serious question, sir. What's your question? How would you bridge the gap? People, yeah, she's answered that. Yeah. In India Better. Are younger else. than eight. Give this guy a mic. No, all I can say is uh, whatever you just mentioned, yes, 80% yeah. of the youth do not care about these divides. They want progress, they want education, they want opportunities, they want better incomes, better lifestyles, and that is what we should be discussing. Okay, that answers your question, such as it was. Yeah. Hello. 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 My name is Swarnim Ashok Sharma, and I have to ask the question to the left of my side, uh, all the people. Uh, the question is that uh, you talked about in communist uh, government, all the people have equal rights and they can uh, do any, they can make any kind of art expression. Nobody actually want. said that. Yeah, no, no. They, he, he was talking about it. He was talking about it. That he was communist talking about government had freedom of expression. No, I don't think anyone said that. No, no, no. He was talking about uh, communist utopia, didn't he? Yes. First he time I've heard the phrase this evening. I What's your question? No, your my question. question uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll come to my question. The question is that in USSR, uh, when USSR was formed, all the artists, uh, considering the actors, uh, yeah. including Mayor Hole, 
uh, all those would have to flee to U.S., okay. which all is right. a capitalist okay. country. Yeah, okay, I got it. Itself. It's a good question that you guys talk about the left and all the wonderful stuff uh, it does. Oh, How wait. about the gulags? How about the great leap forward? How about all the tyranny that was inflicted Ooh. by communists on the, Ooh, we on have the world? Made That's it, all your question. We right? have made it a good question. We have made it very clear that left is an idea, a vibrant movement towards equality, towards progressism, towards reform. We have not said that the left is occupied by a particular section or has been occupied by particular segments whom we deride, whom we but deride. So the communists don't have, the Soviets don't have a monopoly of the left. Mm -hmm. The left is a vibrant idea. They came for a while, they left for a while. Okay, it. okay, but you disown China, you disown the Soviet Union, and your whole party has spent its life fighting the left in Bengal. So where does this leftist idea, which is so vibrant, work? The, the so-called leftists in Bengal are hardly left. They have left behind. Yeah, anybody so you don't like is not exactly one put it. They are hardly left. So they use the term left. They appropriated the term left. They tried to go in for a lot of, lot of statements that would be sounding nice. But at the end of it, you know how impoverished we are left with. The question is, the vibrancy of the idea of the left is all encompassing. It okay. keeps changing from time to time. We get that, but Certain his occupants. Yeah, yeah, we get that. His, his question is, tell me a place where this vibrant idea has worked. That's his question. Uh, it, it was there in jail. You know, Gandhi wrote a book saying why I'm a socialist. And Dalai Lama has written why I'm a socialist. So I think to to see the left as a narrow ruling ideology is to not see the richness okay. of the struggle for justice okay. and the struggle for equality. And what we are saying is, it's that struggle which will create the unity and the glue for our society to hold together. Okay. Without right. it, it will break apart. So you're talking, therefore, not about any political party or whatever. You're saying it's an idea. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of governance. And that's what you're standing for. Purshadam Ji, last words. No, I just want to say that uh, one can say that the idea of religion has not worked. Because all religions have been uh, teaching brotherhood, peace, and all that. And we have been killing each other in the name of religion. Do we dismiss the idea of religion altogether? Or do we dismiss the idea of spirituality altogether? I categorically denounced the Soviet system, the Chinese system, and all that. But the fact remains that the human desire, human moral quest for an equality, when I will be given time by the moderator, I will read out something from the Not today, that because that your time is up. No. <laughs> what, what, about the, what, about the closing, over, yeah. what about the closing okay, remarks? I'm telling you what, you'll do a rebuttal. And in the rebuttal, you can read it up. Closing yeah. remarks. Yeah, OK, so, fair enough. No, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm counting on that. All right, no, no. you. I'm we will give you, you, sir, for closing remarks. You have two minutes now to answer that. Yeah, we're going to give you a rebuttal time. Two minutes now. After this, yeah. No, uh, yeah, about. that's fine. So, I'm, so I'm, the point I'm making we are, that we are supposed to have ended in five minutes, but obviously we are not going to. But I won't keep the question and answers going much longer. You want to, Jawar, you want to do your first rebuttal? Yeah. You see, um, I admire the. Uh, closing remarks. Huh? Closing remarks. These are closing your, remarks. Rebuttal, closing remarks. Oh, Come into it here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for all the patience. And uh, I thank the members of the opposition and members on the other side for some of the remarkable remarks that they have made. But when they were doing so, they were actually supporting our cause, if you have noticed. Every time they made something sensible, they were actually speaking on our side that the bridge between aspiration and conservatism is so wide that it can't be <coughs> ever got across. The point that we are making from minute one is that on the one hand, you have hope, you have desire for equality, you have desire for, uh, for a more equitable world, for a lot of things that go wrong. And on the other hand, you have a conservative group that does not believe in change. There are no changes and pro-changers. They are like the North Pole and the South Pole. They can never get together. Any bridge that is made is one of convenience. Any bridge that is one made is one of surreptitious intentions. Any bridge that is made is just imaginary. Just like you can't bring the North Pole and the South Pole together, you cannot bring this binary 
debate to any particular point because the left will always, within every society, within left society, another left wing comes out with fresh ideas, with fresh hope. Why do we wish Happy New Year? Because we wish that every time there is an occasion for change, we will move together for a better world, for a better tomorrow. That idea is what we call and can't change it. Thank you. Okay, quick closing remarks and rebuttal. Can I ask Makaran Paranspe to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this very stage disproves the proposition. If North and South Pole is what left and right are, we are sitting together and the bridge is Veer Sangvi. So from the first to the last, their arguments like a pack of cards have collapsed. Now, in this country, we believe in Atithi Devo Bhava. So I want to apologize to my friend from abroad. But all, all I want to tell him is that the US, where I've lived for several years, is a very unequal society. And they're killing people. They open fire on each other. There have been 200 such incidents in the last couple of months, in fact, if you look at the records. Why don't you go and fix your country? The point I'm trying to make is of neo-colonialism. Therefore, the real problem before India is not left and right. We have neighbors who are hostile. We have foreign powers who want to weaken us. And the real question for us is good governance, not ideology. And you will see, my friends, that Indians have voted for good governance. And ideology is only the carapace, is only the sugar coating. And ideologies divide, including left and right. And what my opponents have done, unfortunately, is they have defined the left and right completely out of the debate by identifying justice and truth with the left and corruption, inequality, injustice with the right. Obviously, that's not tenable. Look around you. You'll find as much injustice on the so-called left, maybe even more, than on the right. So please don't let your thinking be clouded by those who want to divide us. Go for unity, go for reconciliation, and go for a great and prosperous India. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time during the question and answer session to give Pushrotham Agarwal a chance to properly reply. He has that now. I am just going to read out some data, some figures from the Oxfam report, Oxfam report on inequality. This has not been contested so far, and yes, it comes from a foreign agency and it does not make us any less credible. The re according to this report, top 1% have cornered more than 40% of total wealth generated in last one year. Bottom 50% have only 3%. And in this situation, we are asked to celebrate one person, while at the same time, we are also asked to celebrate that 77% of fellow citizens are dependent on five kilo uh, ration every month from the government. Then the income of super rich has increased at the rate of 121%, and hunger has taken 35 crores Indian in its ambit. 100 richest Indians have wealth worth more than 50 lakh crores. This is equivalent to 18 months of union budget. How many of those Vasudev Kutumbakam Indians have offered to donate their wealth for the upliftment of their fellow citizens? Okay. If the Indian billionaires are taxed on their total wealth at the rate of just 2%, 40 crore Indians can be taken out of malnutrition. This is the situation. And whosoever has to oppose this inequality has to take what is called left position. I would just like to end about this bridge building business by quoting a poem from the eminent Hindi poet Naresh Saxena. Pul par karne se pul par hota hai, nadi par nahi hoti. Nadi par nahi hoti, nadi mein dhase bina. Nadi mein dhase bina pul ka arth bhi samaj nahi aata. Nadi mein dhase bina pul par karne se pul par nahi hota, sirf loa langar par hota hai. So there is a difference between Poland and Lua Langa. Thank you, thank you Pushotam ji. Can I ask? 
Priyanka Chaturvedi deliver her closing remarks. I'm always in the favor of building bridges rather than breaking bridges down to the point where we have no conversations, to a point where we do not have a meeting ground. So I will continue to stand in favor of building bridges over breaking them. Over saying that something is impossible also says I am possible. I just want to say and end my concluding remarks would be just this. Agar nadi hi sukh jayegi, bridge karne ka, paar karne ka fayda kya hoga? Nadi hamara desh hai, nadi hamare jeevan hai, nadi hamare log hai, nadi hamari sanskriti hai, nadi hamara itihas hai, nadi hamari sarve sarva hai. Or jab hum wo bridge paar karenge, hum is responsibility se karenge ke hume ye desh ki nadi kabhi sukhne nahi deni hai. That is all I, my intention was. I'm a strong opponent of the current government. And I will continue to have a strong voice on that particular point. But when it comes to my country, I will say that we have to take the best of left, the best of right, to move ahead. Thank you so much. Can I ask Vandana Shiva to give her closing remarks? I come from the Himalaya, from the lap of the Ganga Himalaya. And we have watched what is happening to our sacred rivers. We have watched as a new ascendancy of malgovernance and maldevelopment in the name of insulation from democratic questioning is making our Joshi much sink. We want unity, but the unity will not come by the superiority of one privileged group on the basis of patriarchy, crushing women, on the basis of caste supremacy, crushing the Dalits. It will not come by the 1% who have been sorted again and again by crushing the 99%. We want a unity through justice, through fairness, through the defense of the Constitution, which is being trampled by this fake superiority narrative of our times. Our last speaker of the evening, can I ask Pavan Varma to give his closing remarks? देखिए एक बात समझिए हम राष्ट्र तो हैं और युवा राष्ट्र हैं बहुत पुरानी संस्कृति और सभ्यता भी है और इस संस्कृति और सभ्यता में इस तरह का जो अलगाव आज हमारे सामने है वो जरूरी भी नहीं है और कामगर भी नहीं है मैं इसलिए कहता हूं South Pole, we talked of the South Pole and the North Pole, my good friend Jawahar. He says they can never meet, but they are both part of one earth. And one earth is part of one planetary system. And that is part of a galaxy. And a galaxy is part of the Brahmand. There is a unity. I remember, and that is why I say, we get too taken up by ideologues. Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji, whose poems I translated when he was prime minister on his request, his uh, foster daughter met me at a dinner and she said, Bab ji keh rahe hai ki Pavan ji agar meri written speeches likhte, to unme aur dam hota, par shayad unne meri party ni pasand hai. To unse kehna na, mujhe kaun si pasand hai? In other words, we are not jihadi doctrinaire civilization. We, we try to find a synthesis. And I agree with Purushottam Agarwalji and the statistics he gave. All I am saying is, can he say to me honestly that the monopoly of one ideology that will solve the problems? No. We, the people, through democracy and the constitution, will solve the problem. And what is wrong in the left must be fought, and what is wrong in the right must be fought. Thank you, Pavan. That concludes our debate. 
before I ask Sanjoy to come and poll you, can I just thank our panelists for very high standard of debate and for being, for the most part, good-natured about their differences? And can I thank you as an audience for being so engaged, asking such intelligent questions, and really making this debate a success? So thank you. Can I now ask Sanjoy to come and uh, vote the, take a vote? Thank you so much, V. Sangvi, and thank you all the panelists. So for this is the time that you have to tell us who won this debate. Ladies and gentlemen, for the motion, the right and left divide can never be bridged. Those of you who wish to vote for the motion, raise your hands and raise your voices. Those of you who are voting against the motion, the right and left divide can never be bridged. Raise your hands and raise your voices. I'm not sure. Shall we do this again? It seems to be equal. You, you, you really need to do this really loudly and put your hands up because right now there's no, there's no real divide. I mean, there's a, it seems to be equal. Once again, for the motion, the right and left divide can never be bridged. Those voting in favor, raise your hands and your voices. Those who are voting against the motion that the right and left divide can never be bridged, i.e. that it can be bridged, raise your hands, raise your voices. It seems to be similar, but I suspect that we had more people shout for the motion that the right and left divide can never be bridged. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the Jaipur Literature Festival 2023. On behalf of Namita Gokhale, William Dalrymple, and my colleagues at Teamwork Arts, Sharupa Datta, Suraj, Preeta, Kritika, and our programming team, and all our colleagues, a big thank you. See you next year in January. Stay back for the closing ceremony, which is going to be music by Nathulal Solanki, the 13th generation Nagara player from Pushkar.
tere 